Hello and welcome back to episode two of my Zwift 30 day challenge. This is episode two. If you haven't seen episode one, then it is linked up in the top of the corner of the screen. So do go and check it out. Now the first 11 days you may have seen, I put quite a lot of training load through my legs. So I think I've really got to start to focus on my recovery and making sure that my time off the bike and actually even on the bike is really optimized so that all the gains can really sink in. Luckily, Zwift have some amazing tools to help and aid recovery, so we're gonna use a lot of those. I'm really excited about allowing those initial workouts to really settle in and start to build from a new place, because I think that's how we're gonna to get to a new FTP by the end of the month. Now the next 10 days, we've got some fun things planned. And one key thing is I'm gonna be chatting to Matt Heyman and I'm gonna get his advice on what he thinks I should do to get the most out of these 30 days. So I'm very excited to hear from him. Now today is day 12 and I've just got back from work, which means it is prime Zwifting time. So I'm gonna jump on the turbo and we're gonna get another session under the belt because quite frankly, I'm feeling ready for it. So day 12 is underway, but there's one piece of exciting news that I am buzzing to share with you. And that is, ladies and gents, we have a fan. I am very happy to now have a fan. Um, I'm gonna go get it going in a minute. But I'm also hoping that my performance might actually improve a little bit. Um, but I've just loaded up a workout now. This one is a whole bunch of pyramids. It's gonna be quite intense, but it should get the legs fired up, which would be nice. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. We got it done. Um, I'm not 100% not happy with how I performed on that. I, I kind of, well, I definitely just wasn't hitting the numbers that I wanted to, um, and I just wasn't very consistent. Um, I think that could just be fatigue creeping in though. Oh, I tell you what, time for some dinner, time for bed. Ready, ready for the next one. So it's another fantastic day on the turbo trainer. Because I was feeling a little bit fatigued, I decided, you know what? I'm not gonna do a session today, but instead I was actually gonna join one of the pace partners on Zwift. And I went for something at 2.2 uh, watts a kilo, um, cause I found that that's quite a nice like kind of recovery spot for me. And that works to be a, around my zone too, which is really nice. So um, I'm gonna spend some time just spinning the legs out cause I think it's what I need right now. Um, and yeah, using the pace partner just makes it really easy to kind of continually judge my effort. And there's a, there's a nice visual reminder of roughly where I should be. After work today, I don't think there was any chance of me heading out onto the roads because it was dark. Um, and to be honest, I couldn't really be bothered to faff about with getting changed and uh, getting my bike set up. It was much easier just to chuck on some bib shorts, chuck on the shoes, get a drink ready, jump on the turbo and just go. It's day 18. Um, I've just jumped onto Zwift and we're gonna do something a little bit different today. I think I'm gonna see if I can find one of the pro training camps and have a pick of one of their workouts. So here we go, the Ineos Grenadiers. I think I might go for something that's a two out of five or a three out of five in terms of difficulty. The row, Luke Row. I think that could be the ticket. I think this is going to be a cracking session to do today. Um, lots of short intervals and it looks like we're going to be taking it well above FTP as well. Got to start spinning those legs. Who knows what Mr. Rowe's got in store for us today. Oh, it's probably going to be a pretty honest session. Welcome to the Ineos Grenadiers virtual training camp. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, nice little five minute warm up. 47 minute session. Lots of intervals towards the end, but for now, we're just gonna get these legs spinning. And that is a wrap on day 18. Um, good session, actually. Um, some nice high cadence, high power intervals. Um, Luke Crow, you did me a solid session there, thank you very much. 
I'm just gonna spin down now and have my dinner because I can smell it in the oven and I am hungry. It's day 19, but today we have got something a little bit special. I'm gonna be talking to Matt Heyman any moment now. And famously, he did use Zwift to recover after his crash at Omloop to then go and win Paru Bay. So we're gonna to chat to him now and see what he has to say. Hey Matt. Hi, how are you going? I guess these days um, in retirement, what kind of a role does Zwift play in your life now? Because obviously it's not going to be for winning Roubaix again. It's, I'm guessing no. it plays a pretty different kind of role. I'm the father of three and uh, I've got a lot of other things on. And as far as bang for your buck goes, um, if you, you know, and for me, it's important to stay healthy before the kids get up, after the kids go to bed or, or get a quick race in. Um, sometimes I've, you know, have to back off a bit because, uh, you know, you go straight into a criterion without warming up too much and, and, and you're pushing yourself a bit hard. So uh, not everything needs to be high intensity. Um, but yeah, just bang for your buck. Um, and, you know, cycling is a, is a sport that, that uh, takes a lot of time normally, which is, which is great. But um, I've spent a lot of time over the 20 year career that I had, I've spent a lot of time away from the family. Um, Telling them I was out training. I was at a coffee shop every now and again, but uh, I, I told them I was out training. So, so now if you're just in the garage and you can knock something out and in 45 minutes, you've done a really good workout. And that's the same as that you would do if you went for a run or you went for a swim or something else, you know, those other sports where, uh, and traditionally, you know, a, a bike ride is going to take up two hours of your time. And then, and then when you do go out on the weekend, on the Saturday or the Sunday with the with, with the group, you, you you feel you feel the benefit of that. You feel the difference. Yeah, absolutely. 100. And and we've all got an ego. It doesn't matter whether you're a retired professional or you're a weekend warrior. Um, and and I've seen that across, and more, probably more so now that I'm retired. Um, that you know everybody's competitive in one way in their life and and whether you're just racing yourself racing last week's Strava or, or racing your best mate or the guy on the bunch with a new bike yeah uh, um, everybody is competitive so yeah and a big thing that I that I didn't know in the early days when you know back in 16 when when I was training was was about the ventilation and the fans so I was doing all those sessions without a fan at all just you know, and, and, you know, it was sending my heart rate through the roof. Um, my power was down because of it. Um, and we know now, and there's a lot more research about the heat, uh, and what that does to your body. And I was just throwing that extra, you know, extra intensity into every session. Uh, but the flip side as well, when, when you're training, um, having that extra stimulus is, is going to translate when you go out on the road. So you are giving yourself a harder session. Um, you know, there is something about the dead points in, in, in the stroke when you're on there that you don't, you know, it isn't exactly the same as on the road that gives you that extra power and you feel like you've activated more muscles when you go on the road. And and if you've trained and your, your body core temperature has been slightly elevated, you've given yourself a harder training session and, and normally you go out on the road and, and feel a million bucks. So at the moment, um, it, with Swift, I'm doing a I'm doing a 30 day challenge, and I started at the okay. beginning of October, and the challenge yep. is to ride on Swift for every every single day of the month, and yep. to do a minimum of 45 minutes a day. Um, the aim that I've set myself is to add 20 watts onto my FTP. Do you have any tips to help me uh, add those extra 20 watts? Yeah. So some of your some of your shorter. I know I'm preparing for. For Roubaix, I was doing a lot of five and seven minutes, even shorter than that, efforts um, with recovery. And then I think probably after doing 20 days already, um, that you want to build in, um, you know, th that you, you go to a, a peak and you keep your rest days. You, maybe there are days that you do just on the 45 minutes and keep it pretty, because if you do just keep putting intensity on, on intensity, that, that eventually you're going to you you might get some um, some gains early on, but in the long run, that's probably not going to be sustainable. So, um, whether that's some smaller blocks, and definitely w working towards the end of the month, um, that you're building in more of those recovery days where you just do 45 minutes. And and probably the last tip is uh, okay. make sure you get that uh, get that ventilation right too for yes. the for the last test. I think uh, if you can keep yourself nice and cool, and as we we're saying. You can use that as a training stimulus, but if you're going for a result, then you want to make sure you keep the body temperature down, cool, hydrated and, and nice and cool. I found chatting to Matt yesterday super, super helpful. And actually I've implemented some of his advice already on today, day 20. 
And just hearing how important recovery is was good, good for me to hear because I'm not great at recovery rides. And which is why I found using the Zwift Pace Partners really helpful because it allowed me to have a visual reminder of how hard I should be working and not overcooking it because that's something that I can often be guilty of doing. So that was something that I found really useful. That's it though for episode two. We've got a lot to come in the final episode. I'm going to do my first whiff race, which I'm very excited for. And of course, I've got the final FTP test. The final result has all my work paid off. Fingers crossed. I'm very excited. I think the last 10 days are going to be absolutely brilliant. Um, but yeah, make sure you come back next week. If you enjoyed this video though, make sure you drop in a like, subscribe to the channel as always, and I'll see you next week.